This is the second video about refactoring. Here we're going to uh, focus more on functions. As we saw in the previous video, refactoring is all about removing duplicate or similar code to make the program easier to understand and to improve code maintenance. Let's look at an example here. We've got two chunks of code somewhere in the program and we can see that they're quite similar but they diff just differ in a couple of things. So we can just produce a function. You can see that the intention is to draw a red ellipse as we can see by the fill but all that varies is the XY coordinates. So that's captured in this function here. It's got the stroke and the fill. You see the parameters are important here are the X and the Y. They're the things that change. And so we can replace the original two bits of code with two calls to the function, where the only thing we need to supply are the things that change, the X and Y coordinates. Here's another example. So here we see it's like the previous one, but we've got an extra thing here. In one place we've got an ellipse, and the other we've got a rect. We can still capture this. It's a little bit more complicated. But what we can do is we can introduce something that represents whether we have an ellipse or a rect. So we've got these two constants up the top here. An ellipse having the value 1, rect having the value 2. They're just totally arbitrary values that we're using. And now it's like our previous uh, draw a red ellipse function, but now we're saying draw a red shape, and we have a third parameter, int shape, and shape's going to have the value of either 1 or 2 to tell us whether we're meant to be drawing an ellipse or a rect. And you can see how that works in the function there. We've got if shape is an ellipse, then draw an ellipse, else draw a rect. But otherwise everything else is the same. So we've still got the same stroke and fill. We're still using the xy coordinates for drawing the shape. And we can see then the code up the top there, the two chunks of code in the top left of the slide, can now be replaced by these two function calls here, where it's like the previous example, except we need to pass, pass in as a third parameter the shape. Sometimes we have functions that do very similar things, but they're a little bit different here. We get the average of two numbers, we get the average of three numbers. So how can we generalize this? Well, this just screams out for an array. And now we can say, OK, well, we can work out the average of all the numbers in the array. This means that uh, the original two functions need to be slightly different. Oops, need to be slightly different in that uh, we have to uh, create arrays for those two, ver two values or the three values. Um, but this new average function would probably find wider use. Here's a bigger function here. And really what we, we're trying to do with a function always is get it to do a single thing. And if we look at closely at this, this is actually doing two things. We split the function with a sort of empty line in the middle there. We can see that the first part is working out the average of an array. And the second part, maybe not all that obvious, but it's trying to find the element in the array that's closest to that average. So what we can do is basically split this into two functions to capture those two different things that it's doing. So the first part we can create a function that calculates an average. Then the second part we can say, let's find in an array the first element that's closest to a particular value. I mean, previously we were looking for closest to the average, but let's just generalize it slightly and say closest to a particular value. And now we can just reduce that down to um, two functions and we can go back and change uh, where that's getting used. Uh, what I want to talk about here is just um, a brief case, case study in uh, <coughs> how refactoring can happen um, out in the real world. Back in the 1990s when GST was introduced in Australia, programs had to be changed <coughs> excuse me, programs had to be changed 
to incorporate GST and so everywhere where you had a price you wanted to know what the GST was then you need to work out 10% you know, of that so you need to divide the price by 10 here we're assuming um, price is kept in cents so it seems like okay you could just go around everywhere in the code and just write wherever you want to know what the GST is you just divide the price by 10 but what we really want to do is centralize how GST is calculated there's always the chance that GST might go up or somehow the way that GST is calculated changes so now we've got a function you pass in a price and it returns the GST and so you need to go through everywhere in your program you want to know GST you don't just divide by 10 you call this function then things can change turns out that <coughs> some <coughs> some uh, users of this, uh, this is on a, a web service here. Some users of this were actually exempt from GST, so we needed to be able to look at the user's user ID, look them up, and see if they're exempt. And if they're exempt, then GST is just going to get returned to zero. And if the user is not exempt, then it's just calculated in the normal way. And then it can get more complicated. It depends on the particular product. In that some products you don't calculate the GST on the whole price of the product you only charge it on the margin over the cost so again you need to have the product available to be able to do this so suddenly our simple little GST calculation function which took price now is four parameters instead of one but what's happened through all this is we've centralized always what has to be done so the moral of the story is if you think change is likely in the future then you should always centralize that code in a function and then use that function everywhere and maintenance will be a lot easier.